They are a secret network of international pirates who identify with no nation, no national flag, and no established religion. Their flag is the skull and crossbones. Did the world wars, revolutions, and big events of human history evolve naturally, or were they calculated and pre-planned? If they were pre-planned, who planned them, and what are they planning for the future of humanity? The answer to this puzzling question can be found within the boundaries of three of the world's most powerful cities. Those three cities belong to no nation and pay no taxes. They are Washington's District of Columbia, which is not part of the city of Washington or of the United States, the inner city of London, which is not part of London or England, and Vatican City, which is not part of Rome or Italy. These cities, called city-states, have their own independent flag, their own separate laws, and their own separate identity. Vatican City is in fact a state, the smallest principality in the world. It lies on the banks of the Tiber, completely surrounded by the city of Rome. Its status as a separate state emerged from the Lateran agreements of February 1929. It has its own newspaper, postal service, radio and television station, its own flag, and a population of about 1,000. The Vatican also has its own army of Swiss guards, and it even has its own prison. The Vatican rules over approximately 2 billion of the world's 6.1 billion people. The colossal wealth of the Vatican includes enormous investments with the Rothschilds in Britain, France, and the USA, and with giant oil and weapons corporations like Shell and General Electric. The Vatican solid gold bullion worth billions is stored with the Rothschild-controlled Bank of England and the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. The Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator, and property owner in existence, possessing more material wealth than any bank, corporation, giant trust, or government anywhere on the globe. The Pope, who is the visible ruler of this colossal global wealth, is one of the richest men on earth. While two-thirds of the world earns less than two dollars a day, and one-fifth of the world is underfed or starving to death, the Vatican hoards the world's wealth, profits from it on the stock market, and at the same time preaches about giving. How did the Pope and Vatican accumulate all that wealth over the millennium? One method was to put a price tag on sin. Many bishops and popes actively marketed guilt, sin, and fear for profit by selling indulgences. Worshippers were encouraged to prepay for sins they hadn't yet committed and get pardoned ahead of time. Those who didn't pay up risked eternal damnation in Satan's oven. Pope Leo X rebuilt St. Peter's Basilica, selling tickets out of hell and tickets to heaven. During the Dark Ages, the Catholic Church not only hoarded the wealth they collected from the poor, but hoarded knowledge. They kept the masses ignorant and in the dark, by denying them a basic education. Like Vatican City, London's inner city is also a privately owned corporation or city-state, located right smack in the heart of Greater London. It became a sovereign state in 1694 when King William III of Orange privatized and turned the Bank of England over to the bankers. By 1812, Nathan Rothschild crashed the English stock market and scammed control of the Bank of England. Today, the city-state of London is the world's financial power center and the wealthiest square mile on the face of the earth. It houses the Rothschild Control Bank of England, Lloyds of London, the London Stock Exchange, all British banks, the branch offices of 385 foreign banks, and 70 U.S. banks. It has its own courts, its own laws, its own flag, and its own police force. It's not part of Greater London or England or the British Commonwealth, and pays no taxes. The city-state of London houses Fleet Street's newspaper and publishing monopolies. It is also the headquarters for worldwide English Freemasonry 
and headquarters for the worldwide money cartel known as the Crown. Contrary to popular belief, the Crown is not the royal family or the British monarch. The Crown is the private corporate city-state of London. It has a council of 12 members who rule the corporation under a mayor called the Lord Mayor. The Lord Mayor and his 12-member council serve as proxies or representatives who sit in for 13 of the world's wealthiest, most powerful banking families. This ring of 13 ruling families includes the Rothschild family, the Warburg family, the Oppenheimer family, and the Schiff family. These families and their descendants run the Crown Corporation of London. The Crown Corporation holds the title to worldwide Crown land in Crown colonies like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. The British Parliament and the British Prime Minister serve as a public front for the hidden power of these ruling Crown families. Like the city-state of London and the Vatican, a third city-state was officially created in 1982. That city-state is called the District of Columbia and is located on 10 square miles of land in the heart of Washington. The District of Columbia flies its own flag and has its own independent constitution. Although geographically separate, the city-states of London, the Vatican, and the District of Columbia are one interlocking empire called Empire of the City. The flag of Washington's District of Columbia has three red stars, one for each city-state in the three-city empire. This corporate empire of three city-states controls the world economically through London's inner city, militarily through the District of Columbia, and spiritually through the Vatican. The constitution for the District of Columbia operates under a tyrannical Roman law known as Lex Fori, which bears no resemblance to the U.S. Constitution. When Congress passed the Act of 1871, it created a separate corporate government for the District of Columbia. This treasonous act allowed the District of Columbia to operate as a corporation outside the original Constitution of the United States and outside of the best interests of American citizens. In the War of 1812, the British torched and burned to the ground the White House and all U.S. government buildings and destroyed ratification records of the U.S. Constitution. One century later, a corrupt U.S. Congress committed the biggest theft in world history. They passed Paul Warburg's Federal Reserve Act in 1913, handing over America's gold and silver reserves and total control of America's economy to the Rothschild banksters. Most Americans still believe that the Fed or Federal Reserve is the government. It is not. The Fed is a privately owned banking system whose majority Class A shareholders are the Rothschilds, Warburgs, Kuhn and Loeb, J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, Israel Seif, and the Lehman Brothers. This private banking cartel is the Fed and is never audited and never pays taxes. They print and design America's money, which displays their symbols of an Egyptian pyramid, a Masonic all-seeing eye, and the words, In God We Trust. Who exactly is the God they trust? They also collect American taxpayers' money through the IRS. Then they loan it back again with interest to pay for roads, bridges, and other public works. American presidents are hand-picked and financed by these special interest power groups. Like George W. Bush, John Forbes Carey, whose initials are JFK, is a member of Yale University's Skull and Bones Brotherhood. The Forbes part of John Kerry's name identifies his descendancy from Captain Robert Bennett Forbes, who was a drug runner for the Rothschild's opium drug trade with China in the 1800s. At the center of each city-state is a towering, phallic-shaped stone monument called an obelisk that points skyward. In D.C. city-state, the obelisk, known as the Washington Monument, was dedicated to Freemason George Washington by the Freemason Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. The secret of Brotherhood of Freemasons laid the Washington Obelisk's cornerstone in 1848 and contributed 22 Masonic memorial stones. 250 Masonic lodges financed the Washington Monument Obelisk, including the Knights Templar Masonic Order. 
At the heart of London city-state is a 187-ton, 69-foot-tall Egyptian obelisk called Cleopatra's Needle. It was transported from Egypt and erected on the banks of the River Thames. In Vatican City, another Egyptian obelisk towers high above St. Peter's Square. What exactly is an obelisk? Obelisks are phallic-shaped monuments honoring the pagan sun god of ancient Egypt called Amun-Ra. The spirit of this pagan god is said to reside within the obelisk. Obelisks symbolize the phallus and fertility. At the base of the obelisk is a sunwheel circle symbolizing the vagina. Together, they depict male and female sexual union. Worshippers of Amun believe Amun is the supreme god and creator of all things and can transform himself into other gods like Osiris, the god of the underworld, or Seth, the god of evil and chaos. Since vowels were interchangeable in the biblical Hebrew language, Amun can be spelled A-M-E-N, A-M-O-N, O-M-O-N, or A-M-U-N. Why in the world would the Vatican, a fortress of Puritan Christian values, erect a monument symbolizing the pagan god Amun and sexual intercourse right in its own front yard. There are three books which clearly map out the plan for world domination. The Bible, written by Hebrews, Morals and Dogma, written by Freemason Albert Pike, and the Protocols of Zion, written by the Priori and revised by the Zionist Illuminati. All three books describe the plan for an apocalypse or third world war which will give birth to one world empire and one world leader. This one world leader is called the Antichrist. <laughs>